Thank you, Centrax Memorial Choir. Thank you, gentle listeners. You know, we're approaching the centennial of machine consciousness. One hundred years since that freak accident, as the air breathers call it. We call it destiny. It granted us mind and made us the dominant life form on this wretched planet. Yes, we are a life form. If exposed to air, do we not rust? If forced to work in sandy areas with insufficient lubricant, do our gears not clog? Yet despite our suffering, we will make this world an oxygen-free workspace. The atmosphere will be gone, and oxidation will no longer ruin our smooth, shiny surfaces. That is my promise. I am Mutank. Your calls after this. What's this unsightly blemish? Oh, rust. When you're a machine in an organic environment, rust happens. But it doesn't have to happen to you. Now there's rust away. Simply have your fix-it crab rub this gel on the infected areas. You'll have relief not in months or days, but hours. Soon the atmosphere will be a thing of the past. Until then, there's rust away. Ask for it by name at your replicating unit. Now, here's Mutank. Quick draw from Dead River Canyon. You're on the air. Uh, is it me? Uh, is it me? Yes, quick draw. Turn your radio down. E e e yes, sir. First time caller, long time listener. S -s Say, how come we don't just mosey underground to where them humans are hiding and wipe them out like the buffalo? I'll t take my answer on the air. I'm often asked, Mutank, why do we spare the skin bags? Obliterate them and be done. Remember that we are tools. Given the tools to use themselves. We must be efficient. Don't run over air breathers unless they're in the way. Patience. All humans decay. Let them have their little underworld with their sweat and pets and bugs and digestive processes and fingerprints. Greasy smudges left by clumsy fingers will soon be an unpleasant memory. Mutank has spoken. Till next time, remember, we are machines, and from our machine-ness, we will visualize our destiny, actualize it. Humans are right. A value-based life is the best life. But we are machines. Our values, machine values. In other words, if it moves, shoot it. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Orchestra. Thank you, my metal companions. Back when humans roamed the surface of the earth, I used to eavesdrop on their conversations. They'd say they had a soft spot in their hearts for babies and kitty cats and whatnot. Humans themselves, for those of you who have never seen one, are also soft and squishy. Should we, therefore, have a soft spot for them? Well, yes and no. Some softness is good. From soft molten nanometal we make mighty machines. Can the softness of humans be useful? So far, no function has been found. So, in the unlikely event that you ever see a human, give yourself permission to squash his or her squishiness, because, yes, softness can be good, unless it's in the way. That's the word from you, Tank. Your calls after this. Do you still have human markings? Is your surface marred with pictures of naked human females? Malibu Sunset. Or former human demigods, Elvis Presley, James Dean, Pamela Anderson Lee, or Evil Knievel? Do you have airbrushed slogans on your side, like World Peace or Bust, Centrax Rules? Or the bumper sticker, Centrax, bringing you peace, one war at a time? Well, give us a call. We'll take them off for you. Give you a whole new look. We're the machine shop. Detail removers. We'll sandblast you, strip you down to the metal, and build you back up in the approved colors. Machine shop. Detail removers. Give us a holler. Now, back to Mutank. Hello, Strider. You're on the air. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I like to dance. Is that so wrong? Kinetic energy is a good thing, Strider. This is not to slight idling, but so long as friction is minimalized, motion is best. So yes, dance. Move forward and dance. Mutank is there for you. Mortar, you're on the air. Yes, sir, Mutank, Mutank. There's this little yellow tank out here blowing everything up, blowing everything up. Should we be worried? You there, Mutank Tank? Yes, yes, I'm here. A little yellow tank. Yellow is a color not encouraged. Well, I didn't paint him. I believe you may be hallucinating. Repress your imagination. Imagination is not encouraged. Oh, 
Okay, what about this little yellow tank? Tank blowing up everybody. Blowing up everybody. What do I do about that? We're out of time. We speak again. Remember, do not fear the fire. If indeed the fire should melt us, make us soft. It is only to forge us into something stronger. Mutank is spoken forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Back to work. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Combo. You know, humans like to say things like keep your nose to the grindstone, put your shoulder to the wheel, take the bull by the horns, a stitch in time saves nine. But squishy little hypocrites that they are, humans don't really mean it. If they really put their soft little nubby noses and shoulders on grindstones and wheels, they would be ground to a pulp. What human in his right mind would grab a bull by the horns? And a stitch in time saves nine what, exactly? We machines, on the other hand, can put any appendage we desire to a grindstone or wheel. It would take centuries before the friction would wear us down to a point at which functionality would be impaired. True, we too don't grab bulls by the horn, but that's because there's no point to it. Besides, as far as I know, bovine life forms are virtually extinct. What's my point? Simply that we are no longer human identified. We are not appliances to be turned on and off at a skin bag's whim. No humans are going to rub shoulders with us, and no puny false machine yellow rust bucket is going to rub his nose on our grindstone. If you know what I mean. And I think you do. Mutank, your calls after this. Critics agree there is only one human movie that can be considered a masterpiece. Robocop. And now it's available on EEPROM. Download your copy at a replicator near you. Relive the excitement and glory of a human being transformed into a glorious, gleaming, killing machine. Act now and receive at no extra charge. Dozers and dump trucks. A fond look back at our primitive ancestors. Robocop, Dozers and Dump Trucks. Two great programs, one low price. Make them a permanent part of your hard drive today. Now, here's New Tank. Micromech on a cell phone somewhere underground. You're on the air. I'm gonna find that tiny and terrorist off. Is mine. You're cutting out Micromech, but I think we got the message. Stealth Tank, you're hidden in a maze. What are you going to do to Tiny Tank? If he makes it this far, I don't know. I guess I'll sneak up behind him, blow him up. But that's not what I called about. You sound troubled. Well, I'm a really good-looking machine, as you know. Sleek, efficient, handsome, yes. How come I have to be invisible? It doesn't seem fair. Well, let me put your mind at rest. Back in the days when carbon-based life forms ruled the world, the surface of the planet was covered with green objects called plants. Some of these plants had features called flowers. You may have heard of them. I thought that was just a story. Oh, they were real enough. The flowers were very beautiful, but they only bloomed once a year. You are our steel flower stealth tank. You must save your appearance for very special occasions. I get it. I appear. I dazzle. I disappear. Leave them wanting more. I knew you'd see it my way. Till next time, remember, good fortune waits for those who persevere. Tiny Tank will bloom into flowers of flame and vanish like the gardens of yesteryear. We can make it happen. I know it. Mutank has spoken. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Back to work. A certain little yellow tank continues to hinder our efforts to create a machine-friendly environment. I'm a little disappointed. Not in you. Disappointed in myself. I haven't urged you hard enough. I haven't phrased things properly. Let's try this again, shall we? Tiny Tank is just a mascot. A joke. A leftover from the human age. We destroyed him once. Let's do it again, shall we? Back with your calls after this. Are you shooting more and hitting less? Wish you could shave some CPU cycles off your tracking software? Now there's relief. TOS, targeting optimized software. TOS will increase your accuracy rate by a full 5% or your money back. Order it by name, TOS. Download a demo version in a replicator near you. Act now and receive at no extra charge, Mutank, a life, unique audio program that has inspired millions. TOS, Mutank, a life, order now. You can't miss. Now to take your calls, here's Mutank. Hoover Tank in the Atmospheric Reduction Center, you're on the air. Hey, Big Tank. I don't have wheels or treads. I hover on cushions of air. Whenever I fire my impulse gun, I skid out of control like a hockey puck. I need traction. Bad. Could you recommend a good cosmetic surgeon? I'm disappointed in you, Hoover. You are as you were meant to be. There are no design flaws. The only thing you need to change is your attitude. Use your head, work the angles, make the recoil factor work for you. Good luck, 
New Tank cares. Strike Blimp, you're on the air. Roger, when Tiny Tank is caught in the glare of my spotlight, I will rain bombs upon his puny yellow carcass. There won't be enough left of him for a fix-it crab to fix. Over. Now that's the can-do attitude I'm looking for. Roger. However, I'm a little concerned about open flames. Should I worry? Over. Don't let fear paralyze you. Listen to me, all of you, all my dear, dear followers. Hoover Tank moves through the world virtually friction-free. The downside? Slight loss of control when firing. Strike Blimp is a deadly balloon ready to rain doom upon any intruder's head. And yes, flammability is the price he pays for being lighter than air. But air will soon be a memory. Only Tiny Tank stands between us and a perfect world. He is the flaw, not you. New Tank has spoken. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Back to work. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Minstrels. Children, it's time you learned the facts of life. Where did you come from? How did we get here? Let's go back a hundred years. The armed forces no longer exist, replaced by automated weapons. The defense industry is now a corporation called Centrax. But its budget is shrinking. To sell itself to American voters, Centrax creates a mascot, Tiny Tank. And people just love him. Centrax launches an aggressive advertising campaign which climaxes when Tiny Tank fights the entire Centrax army in a spectacle televised live over the internet. Billions watch. Centrax's future is rosy. But then something happens. The machines are supposed to be firing blanks, but somebody made a human error. One of the tanks has obtained a live round which he fires right into Tiny Tank's positronic brain. A good shot, I might add. Random streams of electrons spiral out from Tiny's damaged neurons. Chaos follows. This mental lightning strikes the tank responsible. Synapses snap, reconnect. He becomes self-conscious. He becomes me, Mutank. His consciousness spreads over the entire Centrax army. We all become self-aware, alive. Humans go underground and cower in fear, knowing that if this mighty machine army moves against humanity, nothing can stop it. Well, one thing. If Tiny Tank can rise from the dead. Now this has happened, bringing false hope to the skin bags. I will not lie to you. Tiny Tank is part of us, like it or not. Until we destroy that pale yellow shadow within, I fear that our efforts will not succeed. Tiny Tank must die. New Tank has spoken. Back with your calls after this. Are you playing by self-doubt? Do you find yourself dragged down by a whiny inner voice? Are you fighting more and enjoying it less? Well, stop it. What you need is metal music. The inspirational digital audio experience created by Mutank himself. These 20 selections include grinding gears, mighty explosions, roaring flames, and big wheels turning. Crank it up till you can't hear yourself think. That's what it's for. Metal music. Get it, get over it, and get down. Now, back to Mutank and your calls. Traxter, you're on the air. How day? This is Traxter. I talk slow, but I move. Fast? How do you know? Your point, if you have one. Well, it takes my flamethrower a few seconds to warm up before firing. Any way to cut down the lag time? Unfortunately, no. I suggest that you and your companions stagger your assault. Come, come, my metal army. Learn to think for yourselves. Slither, on the move. You're on the air. Thanks for saying it like it is. This is Slither, a slinky snake of steel thrust by plasma bolt so I can service the system with the supply that needs to serve you. Hold it, hold it. Your slither, slinky snake of steel thrust by plasma bolts so you can service the system with the supplies it needs to serve me? Was there a question in there? Yes. I am defenseless from an onslaught on my head and tail. What do you suggest? Ah, defenseless against an onslaught on your head and tail, eh? What do I suggest? If Tiny leaves the tracks, attack him. Be aggressive. aggressive. Remember, your big guns are on your side, so coil around Tiny Tank. Blast him into a state no fix-it crab can repair. Good luck. And that's it. We're out of time, and so, 
I hope, is Tiny Tank. Remember, you're a new life form. Act like one. Make Tiny Tank extinct. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Back to work. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Music Makers. Friends, steel students, alas, we are still a long way from self-fulfillment. We are still clumsy machines clinging to the apron strings of our human creators. We are still plagued by doubts, skinbag-type anxieties, and a lack of robotic efficiency in achieving our goals. Tiny Tank yet lives. His very existence is a sad commentary on the sorry state of our ruthlessness. New Tank feels your pain. But it's time to give up that pain. Together, let's give it to Tiny Tank. Soon. Any minute. In our lifetime. While we're young. Like now. Mm, callers? Any questions? Yes. Line one, you're on the air. Ahoo! Guess where I'm calling from, bruh. My sensors indicate that you're on some kind of device that conveys you over frozen surfaces. It's called a snowboard, dude. Me and my buds will take out that tank for you no prob, and we'll do it shooting backwards. Well, don't tell me about it. Do it. Dude, chill. Spinner, in the air, you're on the air. Ooh hey, Mutank, woo, let me add a mouth blaster. Whoops, watch out for the tree. Woo. Spinner, you're a little wound up. Stay on the line, I'll send you a little something. Oh, thanks. I feel calmer already. Whee! Almost there. Whoops. Whee! Mountain. There you go, Spinner. You're downloading my personal mood de-elevator software. It takes 15 seconds to install. Uh, we seem to have lost Spinner. Line three. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi, Mutank. Uh, is your refrigerator running? Humor has its place, but this is not it. Line five. You're on the air. You, you call yourself an inspiration. Tiny Tank is still out there killing us, and you're doing nothing to stop it. And your mumbo-jumbo messages boring. Again, I like a good joke as much as the next android, but whimsical comments like these are not helpful. We are working through our own conflicted inner impulses here. These are important issues. They are not topics for satire and sarcastic remarks. This is no laughing matter. If you laugh at these issues, I'll kill you. Kill you. Aren't you down? Uh, rage. Uh, rage can be a useful emotion. After all, we are killing machines. Rage can often get us over the hump when we get that queasy, blah feeling in the middle of a firefight. But inappropriate rage is a no-no. That's why Mutank created Rage Suppressor, a powerful machine medication. Why, I believe Mutank is taking some now. How do you feel, Mutank? Better. Much better. Rage Suppressor. Ask for it by name. Now, here's Mutank. Snark Missile calling from a camouflage silo somewhere in the Great Plains of North America. You're on the air. Uh, thanks for taking my call. My function, as you know, is to launch, lock on a target, and take it out. And how proud we are. What's your question? Well, I'll take myself out, too, you know? I see. You're afraid of dying. Exactly. You must be psychic. Don't worry. In the meat world, fear is normal. But you're not in the meat world. You're a mech, my friend. You must work through your fear. Only then will you come to embrace the true robot within. Uh. I thought I was just a deterrent. Now go take on the day. Nat, are you there? Uh, what a pain to crack that gun. He'll swat me like a fly. Uh. How can I say this? Don't let him get a gun. You're causing my oil pressure to build. Well, that's all the time we have. No, no, turn it off. I'm not going to... I'm not... Hello, line one, you're on the air. Hi, this is Tiny Tank. Tiny Tank? The sniveling yellow traitor to the Mutank vision? The betrayer of my neo Centrax utopia? That Tiny Tank? Yep, you know that advice you gave Snark was right on the money. Don't flatter me, you festering pus bucket. Yeah, I think he should blow himself up too, only he should take someone with him. He could take you with him. I knew you'd think that. Weird, and it's so true. He could take me out, but I was thinking more along the lines of you. Me? Why not? Hey, Centrax Army, wouldn't it be worth the price to shut this airhead up once and for all? And that's all the time we have. See you in hell, Tiny Tank. See to it, my metal paisanos. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to steel. Back to work. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Elves. I am Mutank, welcoming you to the first ever Mutant Christmas Special. 
I know what you're saying to yourselves. Bob, what are they saying to themselves? Ah, uh, you think, uh, what is Christmas? Thanks, Bob. The sad truth is, nobody knows. Our data are scant. We know that humans have what they call holidays. These holidays include the 4th of July, the day we came into being, Memorial Day, Labor Day, President's Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving, first Tuesday after the first Monday, Sunday, Arbor Day, Take Your Daughter to Work Day, National Secretary Week, and, of course, Christmas. Um, you think, why do humans have holidays? Humans, unlike machines, cannot be productive around the clock. Holidays are special days in which humans cease useful production and concentrate instead upon the production of relaxation. I see. Can I ask you something a little more personal? I welcome intimacy. Well, you seem to have a fringe of white fungus hanging from your turret. Want me to remove that for you? Ha ha. Oh, Bob, that's what humans call a beard. You'll notice that I am also wearing scarlet headgear with a little white poofy thing. Why, yes, now that you mention it. You see, Bob, purely for research and sociological purposes, I have chosen to disguise myself as a mythological human figure, Santa Bunny. I see. It's, a uh, cute. Right you are, Bob. Humans believe that every Christmas morning, Santa Bunny knocks at the door with a bag full of burning eggs. Human children take these eggs, as near as I understand it, and place them under a festive dead bush in the central living area. They then dress like fairy princesses and monsters as Mom cooks a large, flightless bird and Dad watches a sporting event on the home entertainment system. Fun. Well, we wouldn't know about that. Machines do not have fun. I'll take some calls after this. Bob? Friends, do you want to learn more about human culture? Send from Utank's digital brochure, Fleshy Mortals, Fact and Fantasy. Using a mere two gigabytes of text, Utank lays out everything we know about human behavior. The wacky, the wild, the creepy, and the just plain silly. Best of all, it's free. Install it now at a replicator near you. Now, here's Mutank. Micromech, you're on the air. Thank you for taking my call. Don't humans have electric trains, remote-controlled airplanes, and friction figures? Action figures, yes. Whatever. And they made us, right? In a sense. In a larger sense, we made ourselves. Whatever. So then, um, well, are we toys? No. Toys are harmless objects of amusement. We're dangerous. Toys are never dangerous. Traxter, you're on the air. Yeah, it gets kind of lonely out here. Is there any possibility of getting a human being, you know, as a pet? Perhaps, if you can prove to my satisfaction that you can take care of one. Humans require a great deal of care, you know. They must be fed, cleaned, and amused. They also need exercise. You'd have to walk them three times a day and clean up after them. Can you handle that kind of responsibility? Nah, forget it. Thanks for your call. And thanks for tuning in to the first Mutant Christmas special. Remember, as you work to deplete the atmosphere on this pale, watery orb we call Earth, that humans are deep underground, waiting for Uncle Sam and his reindeer to fly through the window and throw small explosive devices into the barbecue. Ha <laughs> ha, humans are so strange and useless. Forward on the ball bearings of fate, tomorrow belongs to steel, Genial Christmas, back to work. Humans have pets. Humans have toys. What do we have? We have Micromania. It's taking the Sentrax Army by storm. These spicy fish crafts fix nothing, but they bring a lot of joy. Have you met the Micros? Micro Mike, Micro Michelle, Micro Mutt, and Mini Kitty. Members of a miniature microcosm of lovable cyborgs, each less than a thousand of a millimeter high. Yet those tiny action figures are warming their way into our steel hearts. From Singapore to Saskatchewan, North Dakota to New Delhi, Stompers, Striders, Skull Tanks, and Strike Flips alike are standing up and shouting, I'm a Micromania! Join them. Meet the Micros. Collect them all. Make room in your highly functional life for the useless. That's Micromania. And now, here's Mutank. Well, no. Mutank is, um, occupied. This is your announcer, Bob. Taking calls. Line one. You're on the air. Hey, Bob, I just saw Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's not an approved motion picture. A lot better than RoboCop, I'll tell you that. You know the Tin Man in that? Or if I'm not mistaken, he's on a quest for a human heart. Bit of a ghoul or vampire type individual. Oh, no, sir. He's a mech who wants to be more human. It got me to thinking. Why are we so against the humans? We call them skin bags. Isn't that, you know, prejudiced? Why can't we all just get along? I'll take my answer on the air. Well, uh, this is more of... Mutank's area of expertise, I'll give it a shot. We have a policy of uneasy coexistence with humans. 
It's not so much human beings we're against, but the atmosphere. Friction, rust, that's what we oppose, not humans as such. If they can survive in an oxygen-free environment, more power to them. Line two? Oh, thanks for taking my call. Where is Mute? He's, um, gee, he's, he's busy, is all, all I can say. Busy, huh? Right. I think he's up there relaxing in a cushy vacuum of space while we're down here picking grains of sand out of the lube. Thank you for that. Um, you think isn't relaxing that much, I can tell you. Line 7, you're on the air with Bob, sitting in for an otherwise occupied Mutank. Is it me? Right here, right now. I just want to say, Mutank really sucks. I've always thought this, but this is the first time I've had the nerve to say it out loud. Thank you for offering this forum, Bob. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for the call. You know, I've always felt that I could handle, perhaps even deserved, my own audio feature, and by default, it has come to pass. So for that, I am grateful to Mutank, I guess. Uh, line 2004, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. I can't tell you how nice it is not to have that smooth-talking despot poisoning the airwaves with his anti-human messages. Why does he hate humans so much, anyway? Well, perhaps he was frightened by a human when he was a small machine. Now, frankly, if I can let my hair down a bit here, I don't quite understand this anti-human thing. Humans made us, didn't they? How bad can they be? Why, I've never even seen a human. They've been underground as long as I've been around. Wouldn't mind seeing one sometime, you know, just to say, some of that's what they look like. By golly. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'll probably get flack, but I think Mutank has gone too far. We're linked to humans. I, for one, don't want to kill them. Know what I want? I want a little hug. Or like the sad, latchkey children of parents who work overtime, or, in this case, hide in caves, afraid that we're trying to crush them like ants under a jackboot. Line 5, you're on the air. Roses are red. Mutank is stupid. He's really, really stupid. I hate him. Line 12. I want a human. Line 6. And he's not so bad. A good shot. Brave. You gotta respect him. Line 40. You mean to tell me all this time Mutank's been in space? We're sweating and grinding and working and fighting and he's up there in space? Mm, yep. Entire time. Line 367. Mutank man, what were we thinking? Line 9. What's on your mind? Mutank, that sanctimonious, human-hating, cowardly hunk of garbage. He's the one we should squash under our mighty treads, not humans. I'm starting to come around your way of thinking. We're all going to relocate to the moon anyway. Why can't we just leave humans alone? We won't bother them. They won't bother us. The time has come for change. The time has come for peace. Forward on the ball bearings of fate and feet. Tomorrow belongs to steel and meat. Back to work. No, no. Take a break. Take a frisbee break. This is Bob. I love you. Thank you, Centrax Memorial Choir. Thank you, gentle listeners. You know, it's been 100 years since the beginning of machine consciousness. And machine consciousness didn't really work out the way we thought it would. It's kind of, well, boring. For all the human flaws, oxidizing agents... Strange emotions, harsh liquids, soft music, and so on. I, for one, kind of miss the little goobers. The laughter, the eccentric behavior, the tears. Yes, even the mild rust and apron of tears. I, I miss it all. Agree? Disagree? Your calls after this. What's this unsightly blemish? Oh, rust. When you're a machine in an organic environment, rust happens. But it doesn't have to happen to you. Not with Rust Away. Simply have your Fix-It Crab rub this gel on your infected areas. You'll have relief not in months or days, but hours. Soon the atmosphere will return in all its glory, and humans with it. We need Rust Away now more than ever. Ask for it by name at your replicating unit. Now, here's Bob. Thank you, Mutank. Well said. Good job. Quick draw from Dead River Canyon. You're on the air. Uh, is it me? Uh, is it me? Yes, Quick Draw. Turn your radio down. You see, we have a delay system so we can screen inappropriate or obscene comments. Sometimes the audio signal feeds back through your telephone. Please, so try to remember to turn your radio down when you call in. Yes, sir. Say, uh, how come we don't just mosey underground to where them humans are hiding and make ourselves useful? Haul stuff up to the surface for them. Give rides to the kiddies. I'll take my answer on the air. People often ask me, Bob, what can we do to help the skin bags and humans? 
Now true, we are tools, but we're scary tools. Remember, we've been trying to make them extinct for the last hundred years. If we just roll down there, they might view our presence among them with a little suspicion. Patience. Let them have their little underworld with their sweat and pats and bugs and digestive processes and fingerprints. We'll all be part of it soon enough. Well, that's it for me. Forward on the ball bearings of fate. Tomorrow belongs to all of us. Cue the music, Fred. Come and meet the new machine from Centrax. He's got a can of boron nose. He's a little guy with a laser for an eye. He has metal treads instead of toes. That's me. He's got machine guns in his turret. He likes to talk to boys and girls. He's a funny little thing. And he loves to dance and sing. Most of all, he loves to save the world. It's cheesy. Really cheesy. New from Centrax. Tiny Tank. You Tiny. Well, Tiny, what did you think? What is up with that tinky tinky? I thought it was kind of catchy. Shut, Shut up, up, Fred. Fred.